Hi guys and welcome to TechBased. In this video, we're going to talk about how to optimize Windows 11 25H2 by using an official tool provided by Microsoft, which is called Power Toys. I've done a few videos before about certain parts of Power Toys, but I've seen requests of people wanting me to make an in-depth video about Power Toys. And in this video, I'm going to show you basically pretty much all there is to it related to the Power Toys app. And we're going to focus mainly on the most important features, but we're going to mention everything. So if you enjoy videos like these, please don't forget to leave a like below and also subscribe to the TechBase channel with the notification bell activated so that you won't miss any future uploads like this one. So let's begin with the video. First of all, to get Power Toys, you're going to have to open up the Microsoft Store. And inside the Microsoft Store, you're going to have to search for Power Toys. It is basically a free tool that is developed by Microsoft. And this tool expands the functionality of Windows 11. It works on older versions as well. But in this video, we're testing it on Windows 11 25H2. Once you get to Microsoft Power Toys, just click on install. Make sure it has this icon. It has this rate and it looks like this because you have to install the official one and the app will be installed pretty much in a few seconds or minutes depending on your internet download speed and then we can open up the software to see what we can do with it. Now Power Toys has been installed we can close out the Microsoft Store and you're gonna see that this window will pop up which will basically show you the main functions of Power Toys on the left side and a welcome screen where you can click on open settings to open the official settings of Power Toys. This is Power Toys settings where you can have access to a home screen and then all the other functions in the left side as you can see here with all the features so we're going to go through everything that there is to it and see how we can use the power toys app we're going to begin of course with power toy settings because here we have all the main functions that we can use we have a quick access section where we can have access to open environment variables open layout editor open hosts file editor open registry preview and also open editor we have also utilities that we can enable or disable very quickly from the right side we're going to go through them pretty easily and also shortcuts which shows you certain shortcuts that you can use in order to have access to different features for example pick a color which is windows plus shift plus c as you can see here the tool has been opened and we can select a color for example if we want to select that one it's going to provide us with the hex rgb and also hsl values that we can use in other programs of course you have additional settings and it will open up the color picker settings inside the power toy settings but we're going to go through that in a bit other quick shortcuts include crop and create a thumbnail, activate zones, preview file, open run, and more. Also here, we can see that we are up to date, but we also have three shortcut conflicts. We can open this and see what are the conflicts. And you can see that we have the same shortcut for a few different features. You can quickly change these out if you don't want these conflicts to be in your operating system. Just click on them and then just click on the edit button to edit the shortcut of that certain feature. Inside Power Toys, you're going to have the general tab as well, where you can customize certain things for example you can check for updates and you're going to see that power toys is up to date if you have all the updates installed you can customize how updates are installed also you can run it as administrator mode the language the theme run as startup show system tray icon and more and also allow experimentation with new features as you saw before microsoft is testing different features in different parts of the operating system for example i've done a video recently in which i showed you how to use the auto dark mode which was an experimental feature which i think now is officially released inside the power Power Toys app. You also have diagnostic and feedback. And now let's move on to the other functions that Power Toys has. So we're going to begin with system tools. We have advanced paste, which will basically allow us to quickly format our clipboard content. As you can see here, you can format it into plain text, markdown, JSON, and more. And you also have an AI powered option that requires an open AI API key to have access to advanced formatting. And you can enable the advanced paste here. And also if you want to have paste with AI, you can also enable this, but you're going to have to have that open AI key, which I don't have at the moment. Now, how we can customize this, we have the activation and behavior, we have the open advanced paste window with a clipboard preview, custom format preview and more, and certain options that we can customize. For example, paste as plain text directly, you have a shortcut, paste as markdown directly, image to text, paste as file, transcode audio, or all of these options, you can set a custom shortcut. And different features from here, for example, transcode to MP3, you're gonna have to enable them if you want to use them. So to test this out, I've opened a notepad document. Let's type in here something random, for example, tech based. We're going to select the text, copy it to our clipboard. And now we can use this shortcut, Windows Shift plus V to see the preview. And as you can see here, we have our text. We also have the options to paste it as plain, markdown or JSON with control plus one, two or three. Or we can also use AI here. But of course, this is not enabled here because I don't have an open AI key available. So I think this is pretty useful to have access to this advanced 
pressed clipboard. And as I've said, you can enable other options from here as an example. And you're going to see them here whenever you're copying an image, if you want to use this or a PNG file. Moving on to awake, this is a convenient way to keep your PC awake on demand. So basically, this is something pretty simple. You have the mode that is the state of your device when awake is active. And basically, we have keep using the selected power plan, keep awake indefinitely, keep awake for a time interval or keep awake until expiration. You can just select an interval and your PC will go to the previous awake state after this interval. Moving on to command palette. This is basically something pretty useful in Windows that you can activate using this shortcut, Windows Alt Space, and this will open up the command palette that you can use for search. You can search for apps, files, and commands, and you can also search in the web, but it won't automatically show you web results so that it is faster. You can just click on this and it will open the Microsoft Edge. I think most likely in the Bing search engine, as you can see. You also have certain settings for this command palette, and you can, of course, change up the shortcut, and you have different other behaviors that you can use. For example, the single click activation, you can disable animations to make it faster and more. In addition to this, you can also add certain extensions, but they are pretty much automatically all added, but you can create your own extensions if you want, but that is a topic for maybe another video. We have the color picker, which we've just seen, and of course, this is the shortcut Windows Shift plus C, and you can customize the activation behavior, which can open the editor or pick a color first. And you have the color formats that you can enable here. And for example, you can enable all the color formats. And whenever you are picking a color, you're going to see all of them displayed on your color picker window. Let's enable them all and see how the color picker looks. Windows Shift plus C. As you can see here, we have here the color picker. Let's select a color. And as you can see, we have all the different formats for colors here that we can use and the history of our picked colors. That is also pretty nice. Inside settings, of course, it's going to automatically redirect us to this section again. We have light switch, which I'm not going to go over because we've done a dedicated video about this. But basically, you can just enable this so that your operating system will automatically turn on dark mode or light mode depending on the time of day. You can customize this very well. Make sure to check out my dedicated video about this. We also have power toys run, which can be enabled by alt space. It's basically something that allows you to do certain things and you can customize a lot of options here. For example, customize the search and results and the position and appearance of that pop up that appears. And from here, you can have access to different plugins. For example, calculate a mathematical equation. So we can just do here three plus three as an example, and you can quickly copy that to our clipboard. Of course, you can do even more complex equations here. And here, as you can see, you have access to the plugins that this power toys run will use. And you have a lot of things, for example, unit converter, value generator, web search, Windows settings, terminal, and more. You can play around with all these. So for example, let's test it out. I'm going to want to use the unit converter. You can also select the including global result option and then all plus enter. And we can type in here as an example, 30 feet to meters is going to automatically show us this. I think this is pretty useful. You can play around with all of these options and see what can help you inside your day to day use of Windows 11. Next up, we have screen ruler, which will basically enable a ruler that allows us to measure our pixels on our screen with a few options of customization and also appearance customization. And to activate this, we can use the keyboard combination Windows Control Shift plus M. And this will open up a pop up that allows us to measure the pixels on our screen. I think this is also pretty useful. We have shortcut guide, which shows you basically all the shortcuts that you have in your operating system. And this can be enabled by Windows Shift and slash. We have text extractor, which will allow you to extract text from anywhere on your screen. This option is also implemented inside snipping tool. And for this, you can just use the keyboard combination Windows Shift plus T, but it will work pretty much the same as the text extractor tool from snipping tool. As you can see here, we have snipping tool. Let me also show you the snipping tool function that was inspired by this. I have here text extractor, select a text, and you're going to have access to all the text inside the section that you've just highlighted. Next up, we have zoom it, which is a tool that allows you to zoom and annotate on your screen. Let's enable it. And the keyboard shortcut for this is control plus one. As you can see here, it automatically zooms. It allows us to draw on our screen and more. This is good for meetings, presentations, and other things. Just press escape to exit out from that mode. Let's now move on to windowing and layouts. We have always on top, which will allow us to pin a window up top. And whenever you are on a window, just use the keyboard combination windows control plus T and that window will be pinned to the top. We also have crop and lock, which allows you to crop an application into a smaller window or just 
create a thumbnail. I think that is also pretty nice. Let's use it on the power toy settings, for example. And we're gonna use Windows, Control, Shift, and T. And let's crop the window. And as you can see here, it actually has done a pretty good job allowing us to do a cropped version of power toy settings. Of course, you have to work on whatever you are selecting, but I think this is pretty interesting. And you also have a reparent shortcut, which can create a cropped version of an application's window by embedding the original app into a new window. Next up, we have Fancy Zones, which I have done a video about previously. Fancy Zones will allow you to create a custom layout that will appear whenever you are hovering over the maximize or minimize buttons, and you can just open the layout editor and have access to different options. And you can click on create new layout, create, and just create your own personal layouts that you can edit and add the different grids that will be available inside the operating system. And lastly, we have workspaces, which allows you to launch a set of applications to custom positions and configurations with one click. If you have this enabled, just use this keyboard combination and then you can just have access to your created workspaces. Just go to the open an editor, create a workspace, and then click on capture whenever your workspace is finished. And it will open up these applications with these positions on the screen whenever we are using this keyboard shortcut. Moving on to input and output, we have the keyboard manager, which allows you to quickly remap keys and shortcuts. This is something pretty useful because maybe your keyboard doesn't have a dedicated software to do that. You can just do it by here, remap a key or remap a shortcut. For example, if you click on remap a key, you can click on add key remapping and select and to send. And whenever you press a key, a certain action will be done. I think this is also pretty useful. We also have mouse utilities that allows you to, for example, have access to the find my mouse option, which is basically something that happens whenever you are pressing the left control twice in this case, but you can customize this. For example, you can shake your mouse and this will do the same, but I think left control twice is the best option. You also have mouse highlighter that you can enable using Windows Shift plus H and also mouse jump, mouse pointer crosshairs and other options that you can customize here. So I think this is also pretty useful. We have mouse without borders, which will allow you to move your cursor across multiple devices. You can enable this. Of course, you're gonna have to have power toys set up on the other computer as well or device and have this key enabled. And you can also customize the device layout from below. Lastly, we have quick accent, which is an alternative way to type accented colors. Basically, this will help people to use different characters that are not available in their keyboard. I think this can be also useful for people that want to type in different languages such as Chinese, Japanese, and more. So I think that is also pretty good. And you can choose your character sets here. You have a lot of options. Moving on to file management, we have here File Explorer add-ons, which includes some of the options that we can also see in the advanced settings page, but it allows you to see different preview panes and different formats here. It also allows you to customize the thumbnail icon preview with different formats. And I think this is also something that you can take into consideration when customizing your file explorer. In addition to this, we have file locksmith, which basically allows you to see which processes a file uses, because I think we've all encountered the situation where we try to delete a file, but it wouldn't delete because Windows tells you that it is opened inside a process, and this will help you see which processes are using that file. And it also has a shell integration, and it will show in the default and extending context menu, but you can also customize this if you don't want it. So as an example, just shift and right click on a file, and you're gonna see here, unlock with file locksmith, which will help you delete that file without having any headaches. We have image resizer, which just allows you to quickly resize an image by right clicking. And you also have different presets that you can have access to and different encoding options for different formats. This is also pretty useful. We also have new plus, which will allow you to see more options whenever you are creating a new folder or whenever you're creating new things on your operating system. You also have peak, which will allow you to preview files really easily. And the activation method should be whatever you choose, a custom shortcut or just spacebar. We also have power rename, which allows you to rename multiple files at the same time using search or even the replace functions. So I think this is also pretty useful. And this again will be available inside the extended context menu. Just select multiple files, shift and right click on them, click on rename with power rename. And here it will show you the list of files and what you want to replace them with alongside with a lot of other options. And finally, we have the advanced options, which for example, include the command not found, basically a PowerShell module. I'm going to go through these a bit faster because these are some advanced options, environment variables, which allows you to manage your environment variables. We have host file editor, which can just allow you to quickly open up the host file editor and see all your exceptions and more inside local host. And finally, we have the registry preview, which will allow you to 
edit complex Windows registry files. So this is pretty much everything that you have access to using the Power Toys tool. I think this is a very, very powerful tool that allows you to optimize Windows 11 to the best and have more options inside the operating system. Some of these options, as you saw, are making their way into the default operating system. So of course, let me know below in the comments what parts of Power Toys are using and if you've used it before. So if you enjoyed this video about Power Toys, don't forget to leave a like below and also subscribe to the TechBase channel with the notification bell activated so that you won't miss any future uploads like this one. I was Mario from TechBase. Until next time, have a nice day.